Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, good evening. My name's Vari Flood, and I want to tell you about roller derby. Um, I want to tell you a bit about the sport, but also why I love it so much, and about my journey of skating in Halifax, West Yorkshire, which is in England, if you hadn't guessed from my accent. So um, I'm ready to start. Yeah. So a lot of people think that roller derby is women fighting on roller skates. Um, they, <laughs> they are, but there's 60 pages of rules. And if you saw Whip It, the film with Drew Barrymore, she punches someone in the face. You're not allowed to do that. And another big thing is it's played on quad roller skates, not in lines. Um, so I'll tell you a bit more about the game. A lot of people remember it from the TV in the 1930s and 40s and 50s and 60s. It apparently saturated the TV channels and it was on a banked track. But in 2001, when it was reincarnated or reborn in... Um, Texas, it started to be played on a flat track, which means you can play it anywhere in any kind of sports hall, which makes it much more accessible, which is why there's now 1,500 teams playing under the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. So this is how you play. I'll try and explain. It's uh, an oval track. You skate anti-clockwise. Uh, that's a pack of eight blockers, four from each team. And the jammers with the star on their helmet, they have to race through the pack. So every time they manage to pass a blocker legally without breaking any rules, they get one point. So the blockers are playing offense and defense the whole time. They're trying to get their jammer through and stop the other jammers getting through. So here's a blocker blocking me quite effectively. I look kind of pained, but <laughs> the aim is not to hurt people, although it does happen. Um, the aim is actually um, to block the path of the jammer by knocking them off the track or down or just skating in front of them. Um, this is where you can hit. The target zones show where you're allowed to hit people. You can't hit them down the middle of the back, but you can hit them kind of anywhere in the middle of their body. You can even hit them in the chest, which is a bit scary. Um, and the blocking zones are what you're allowed to hit with. So I could, for example, hit someone in the chest with my shoulder. It sounds like I'm showing off. I don't think I'm not actually very good at that move. Um, <laughs> OK, so um, this is the um, penalty box, or known as the sin bin. Um, these are two very remorseful players from Manchester Roller Derby, my friends. <laughs> And they're clearly plotting, scheming their next move. But I know I always felt really guilty because I was a jammer. So if you can't score and you're sitting in the box, you feel terrible. You just watch the other jammer go around and score and you sit there feeling terrible. Anyway, I want to tell you how I got into Derby. I read about it in a magazine and it was described as feminist and empowering and amazing. And then my boyfriend at the time was in the supermarket and he met these lovely, friendly looking ladies who happened to be wearing their skate outfit. So he knew they were skaters and he signed me up. I was horrified. <laughs> I was so horrified and excited, I didn't know how to feel. So I went to my first game and I was so impressed by these women who were skating fast and hitting hard and they were so confident and I loved their, their outfits and their individuality. So the next day I went to my first session and was made to wear these silly childish skates. But I discovered I was quite good at skating initially because I'd done roller dancing. Um, but it was really hard work. Like the people who just thought it was about looking good and wearing hot pants, they never came back. So <laughs> this is, um, you have to come up with a skate name. My surname's Flood and I'm fast on skates, so I'm Flash Flood. I'll read some out. Halapin, your business. Skate well tar, Dalai Harmer, Yorkshire Tripper, Rogue Runner, Yorkshire Tees, Iona Fist, Wolverine, Fish and Whips, clearly a threat. So I encourage all of you to come up with your own skate name. It's really good fun. It's like your alter ego. So what kept me going back for more? Um, this is me experiencing what they call a derby high. I've just passed some blockers. I'm so, so excited. Um, and that adrenaline allows you to forget the pain and the aches and the pains and the fatigue. Um, and it also allowed me to forget challenges in my personal life and at work. I could not think about work when I was playing. It was impossible. Um, so this is Bruising Banditas. They became great friends of mine uh, because I played with them for two years. Um, but they weren't the kind of friends I was used to. We didn't sit around analyzing life and talking about relationships and men. There wasn't any time. They were so busy hitting me and then screaming at me to get back up again and pushing me all the time to my limits. But they became good friends. And sometimes people in roller derby call their best friend their derby wife. This doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. This is not... But it, it could be. It could be. Um, this is my derby wife, kind of, Sue. Um, I don't think she knows, but like, she's my... She's like... Yeah, I really admire her. Yeah, <laughs> I should tell her. And... Yeah... <laughs> Um, and that's my derby hero, Tori B, who plays for Team England. We always need referees. The game can't happen without them. They can be male or female. This is Ginger. I asked her why she refs. And she told me she likes refing because she can shut out the personal side of derby and focus on gameplay. In derby, there can be a lot of bitching, hurt feelings, and taking things personally. With refing, it is less personal. You are a colour, an action, and a number. Now, the men who ref have decided they want to play, so we let them. And they now... Um, 
They call themselves Merby, and the girls call it Dangle Derby, which is a bit rude. Uh, <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's New York Shock Exchange playing New World Order in Manchester. And people always say it's much more brutal than women's derby, and kind of it doesn't look like there's any strategy. Um, this is the World Cup in December 2011 in Toronto. America won, the US won, then Canada, then England. Brazil gave it a good shot. I think there's a Brazilian over there. Um, they took 14 players, four of, no, 10 of which had never played a game in their lives. So, uh, and Scotland gave it a good shot, but they were beaten by the US 435 points to one. Um, <laughs> so, um, Roller Derby's taken me to do some unusual things like this, or this was life drawing at, um, a life drawing event where the models were Roller Derby players. That's me at Gay Pride Huddersfield promoting the sport. I've promoted it at comic book conventions and done lots of fundraising and um, charity events, which Roller Derby teams are known for. So now I'm trying to set up, I am setting up, a Bermuda Roller Derby Association. Uh, <laughs> with, um, this is my friend Aruna, now known as Rudy Mental, and we're setting this up um, with Sarah Kelly, who has yet to get a skate name, but you, any um, ideas welcome. So I really miss Derby, and I wanted women here to experience what I felt and the camaraderie and the challenge that came with the sport. So recruitment-wise, this is Heather and Sarah trying out my skates at the PCC, the uh, Pembroke Community Centre, where we are planning to hold our uh, training. So if you're over 18 and you're a woman and you're up for trying this, please get in touch. It doesn't matter if you've never skated before. We need um, referees as well. We need people to help with fundraising, marketing, helping us get fit, all those sort of things. Um, but although I'm the coach, I hope to enlist some help from friends abroad. This is um, Bonnie Thunders, who plays for Gotham Girls Roller Derby. And I met her last week, and she told me that her and another skater called OMG WTF are willing to come. <laughs> they want to come to Bermuda. So I said, yeah, we'll get some people together. And um, yeah, so so far in terms of recruitment, we held Derby Baby at Tuesday. Thank you, Tuesday. Um, and that was a Derby documentary, and that got some interest. And next, we're meeting at Red on March the 7th at 5.30 for a meet and greet. So if you think you'd like to come, please come there, or we're on Facebook, and we are on Gmail. So thank you. That's the end. So how long does it take to get good, and what's the worst type of injury that you've known to have occurred? I don't think anyone's died, I checked, before I started playing. Um, I think someone might be paralysed, um, but that could happen in any sport. I think that was really unlucky. Because um, as I said, the aim isn't to hurt people. I've never, like, I've never set out to hurt someone, but um, I suppose I have now and again. But um, So how long does it take to get good? I think I played a game after six months. Obviously, that was having a lot of peers around me that were inspiring and helped me. So, of course, here it would take longer. But I just want women to enjoy learning to skate and then learning the game and that friendship, you know. I mean, yeah, it's going to be tough to play other teams, but we've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, I don't need a microphone, but thank you. Um, um, uh, what is the average age? I would think you say? Um, the average age is women in their thirties, oh. um, but <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. Like you have to be over eighteen, and um, there's no age limit as long as you can skate. <laughs> Actually, Fiona just asked my question, which was, you have to be over eighteen, but you don't have to be under any particular. No, no, age. there's no <laughs> limit. And um, how about you mentioned something about? Um, sk did you say skate dance? I did roller dancing as a kid, yeah. Dancing. I, do you have any ideas about doing some roller dancing here? Um, someone asked me, actually, yeah. to teach children. Um, oh, but no, I haven't done it since ups? I was like 12. <laughs> I haven't done it since I was 12. We can try. Um, that is a possibility, yeah. I wouldn't rule it out. But Derby is my, that's my passion. That's my project at the moment, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you can dance sometimes. Like when you're waiting for the game to start, sometimes we dance. Um, <laughs> there's music at the games, so. So two questions. How many people in a team? Obviously, you need two teams, so I won't ask the second question. Uh, and the next question is, how many people do you have? Oh, it's confidential. <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly tell you. Um, so there's 14 players on a team. We will try and play with less. You know, we have to. Um, you have 14 because you sub in every two minutes. You start a new game. They're called jams. You play an hour long, it's a series of jams. And um, 
that means uh, it's because it's really sort of fast paced. Um, so you just swap in five players every two minutes. Um, but yeah, we would try and play with less. Obviously, we have to. Yeah. No, we don't necessarily have to. We could go to but we could go to the World Cup in 2016. Bermuda. Let's like if Brazil did it, you know. <laughs> Any more questions? So when is it becoming an Olympic sport? Well, they do have a bid in for all um, roller sports for 2020. And the Royal Derby community really do think it should be a sport. I know it's funny. Like, like I know it looks ridiculous, but um, it is. <laughs> we consider it a sport, you know? It's, it is athletic. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very thank you. much.